I watched my dad die very slowly, which was awfully painful to do, and all he ever wanted to do was ride again. That's all he wanted to do. So I said to myself, so I won't I won't be like that. I'll I'll ride I can still physically ride, so I'm gonna take the opportunity and physically ride while I can and enjoy it while I can. And hopefully not hurt myself. Our family moved up from Victoria and um, Dad bought a motorcycle shop in Queensland, in Brisbane. A Honda shop, which he named Peter Rice Honda. My father was a stepfather to me. And um, we had trouble, really, when I was young, bonding. And then when he bought the motorbike shop, and I rode a motorbike and I was instantly took to it. I was a bit of a natural on riding a motorbike. And then the bond with my father just seemed to grow from that point. Started racing and um, raced all the way through to when I got my licence. Then got distracted by girls, alcohol and things like that that you do. And then came back um, at around um, 20 years old to try road racing. And uh, gave that a go and had quite a bit of success straight up and enjoyed it. So I kept going. Had my first year. My first year in racing was 1989. And um, I think I did 17 races in that year around Australia and I won 15 of them. So there was a lot of success in the first year, it was just a bug, it went from there. I ended up um, meeting Mick Doohan's manager, who was John McGilvery at the time, and he offered to get me some sponsorship, which he ended up getting the Peter Jackson sponsorship. And we went Grand Prix racing, we got, um, got a TZ250 and um, yeah, we raced in Grand Prix box for the next three years and had an absolute ball. This was a great time in my racing career. This was when I won four races on the trot in the Australian Championship and Australian Motorcycle News uh, decided to use my picture, that's me on the bike, on the cover of their magazine, which was a great honour. The only time a 250 GP bike at the time was uh, ever on the front cover of Australian Motorcycle News. That's my mate Mick. If I could go back and change anything, or <laughs> give myself some advice, get a time capsule. I would have taken the opportunity to go overseas when it arose and I kicked myself every day for not taking that opportunity. To me it was such a scary thing to do, to leave this country and, and travel overseas on the hope that I may get a ride on my talent without having the money to back it. If I had pulled all the money together, and keeping in mind, when I went to GP racing in 1990, even though I got that Peter Jackson sponsorship. That money went towards running the bike. Uh, the, we still had to purchase my own bike. So my parents mortgaged their house. They just finished paying their house off and there was a big celebration that the mortgage was paid off. And the very next year, I wanted to go GP racing. I needed to come up with $25,000 to buy a GP bike. So mum and dad um, remortgaged the house for me to be able to get that money to get the bike, take advantage of the Peter Jackson sponsorship and, and go GP racing. So we had financial commitments that were stretched to the hilt. I was an apprentice motorcycle mechanic, so I wasn't earning a lot of money, but I had to fund, fund most of the racing because the Peter Jackson money ran out in the first three or four rounds, and uh, I had to fund it for the rest of the year. Uh, in 1991, I rode the Australian Round of the World GP at Eastern Creek. There was a massive pile-up in turn one that I got involved in, I was taken out, and I ran over a guy <laughs> A Swedish guy went down in front of me named Peter Linden. He was a fighter, fighter pilot over in Sweden. And we ended up in hospital together, laying in hospital beds next to each other. And he said to me that he gave me the opportunity if I ever wanted to go over to Europe and have a try, he would let me ride his bike. And um, at the time it just seemed like something I would never attempt, or I'd be too scared, I didn't have the money, I already had commitments to race in Australia, and I didn't do it. And that, I think, was the biggest mistake of my life, was not taking him up on that offer and going overseas and having a go. So what we're doing with this 250 is I am changing the geometry on the bike quite dramatically. Here's the standard link. Here's a, a link I've had specially made up with a difference to give us a bit more clearance on the rear shock so I can get a bit more swing arm angle into it. This Alitec device is designed for checking wheel alignment, 
which I actually bought it specifically for checking. So we put this into the swing arm pivot and then into the axle and we can make sure that the wheel's perfectly aligned to the swing arm uh, on, both, on both sides. But I've actually got this to put a digital protractor on it for measuring my swing arm angle. I want a specific swing arm angle on this bike. Changing the geometry quite dramatically on the bike from standard. Back in 1990 when I had most of my success uh, on the TZ250A, uh, the geometry was actually set up by Greg McDonald from GMD Engineering and the bike was extremely good. It went very, very well. And um, I'm actually trying to replicate those figures again on this bike. And the way this bike has been released standard from Yamaha is a long way from those figures. I'm checking the clearance in the gearbox between the shims and the rotating gears. Making sure it's in spec so nothing binds up and we don't have a gearbox explode on us at 200 and something kilometres an hour. Yeah, next week we got the Queensland Historic Championships out at Morgan Park and Warwick and getting the bike ready for that and um, I'm very much looking forward to racing again after 25 years of not riding. <laughs> it's a great, great group of guys. Uh, the attitude is just right. They're serious enough, but not too serious. And they've all got a passion for motorbikes. If you still believe that you can still do it, um, yeah, keep doing it. 98, 98, that's the best I can get. Some guys might be running something richer, but you know, without it, I'm not going anywhere, so definitely impossible. Everybody coming around, you know, we're in this scene of the stories. You know, older guys, you know, they've all done their racing. A lot of them done their racing back in the 90s, 2000s, and they're just out here having fun with all their beautiful machines now. And in this great atmosphere, it's a historic racing. And it's, uh, nah, it's fantastic. Most of the preparation has been me. I haven't ridden for so long and I haven't done anything for that long. It's, um, it's just been adjusting my diet, stopping alcohol, um, and, um, and going to the gym, getting fit, doing a lot of exercise, bike training. It's, um, it's certainly been, been hard work. It's been a shock to the body <laughs> at my age. Uh, but I'm looking forward to getting out there and, and trying to get some race results and some good lap times. We've got, I've got Ed Cross with me that's been doing a lot of the work on the bike. Um, Ed's a gun two-stroke tuner, has been for many, many years, from back in the 70s. Uh, he's from England, uh, and he's been a great help, a great help. We're well, good enough to ride them, so, so it's, yeah, it's always been good fun, fixing them, making them go fast, as fast as you can make them go, handle good. It's really enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. Motorbikes keep you young, you know, and uh, because you deal with young people all the time, and you just it just keeps you going. Just it feels great. It's I think that's safer, but I think I'm losing too much time in those handspins going down the first. You want to get in the second? I started 1972, and I started doing TZs and you know 250, 350 Grand Prix back in '73. Been doing them ever since. So. Then I've got my wife, my brother, uh, my son's here, and a uh, good mate Simon's come out to help. So it's a great team. It's a family affair. Oh mate, it's great. You know, it's nothing like these guys I used to race with, and I've been waiting for all of them to come out. I've been racing the last four years, and, and Ricky sort of watched that, and he's been hoping to get out. And now he's got his own bike. He's out here. He hasn't lost any speed at all. And just uh, some of these guys that Ricky was with, though. I, I class them as sort of elite guys, they seem to know a bit more about bikes than me, they have a bit better feel on the machine and basically all I'm doing is running around hanging on and, that and, and just trying to get a guideline off these guys and just um, go as fast as I can. I think it feels, because I've been away from racing for such a long time, getting on this particular bike and doing the speeds that this bike does, 
I've yet to find the limit and I do find that those speeds are a little bit daunting but I do know that lap after lap after lap it's getting easier and we just haven't had enough track time on this bike to be fully comfortable. So each time I go out on the bike, I go quicker and I get more comfortable. If you still got your reflexes and he's always going to have the talent. It's like, it's like every time like they say, you know, uh, once you know how to ride a bike, you, you never forget. You know, or jump on a horse and you never forget how to ride it. So I think he's always going to have the skill. As he gets older, he might slow down a little bit, but it doesn't seem to slow down very much, actually. He's going quite well. I know we need a limit, but this track's so fun. To find the limit and slide the front end of the corner, it's just like one bump and you're down. It's one of the, uh, one of the tracks that riders really like, uh, because of the, the, the technicalities of the circuit. It's one of the most technical circuits around, uh, close to Phillip Island and its technicalities. So yeah, the riders really do like it. Morgan Park is probably one of the premier tracks that we've got. It's only an hour and a half from the Gold Coast, probably the same from Brisbane. It's classified as, as our local track. Got some real hard braking areas, as well as some good flowing areas. So yeah, it covers everything you want in a track for races. It's one of my favourite tracks. It's uh, fast enough, but not too fast. It seems uh, that there's good runoff, and I really enjoy it. I think that when I come to a race meeting, I've got so much to do, even though I do have people helping me. I have so much that I have to do that I'm so busy um, packing up and unloading and setting up that I don't really give it a lot of mental preparation thought. It's just get on and go. Um, with Ed doing the bike, it's crucial for me to know that the bike's right when I get on it. And, um, and I can just go fast knowing that the bike's safe. There's a couple of plates somewhere, I can't find them. Don't know what I've done with them. <laughs> it's all right. He's done a couple of hard starts, so they get pretty, pretty badly worn, you know. Since the bike's been built and I've got on the track, um, <clears throat> I've had a few sponsors come on board and been fantastic to help me. Um, Shark Leathers was one of the first ones to come on board. Um, gave me this suit, gave me the boots, gloves, and they organised the helmet sponsorship with x -Lite. Back in the 90s, I uh, knew of Ricky you know, when he was racing, um, but you know, with Ricky, uh, there's value in for Ricky because, like I said, he, he really pushes you know, his sponsors, um, I suppose, image out in, in, in the racing community. So, yeah, it's a, it's, it was a no-brainer. <laughs> um, we've had Silk Lean Oils come on board, uh, supplying us with oils. Um, we've got um, Admired Composites have painted the bike. Uh, Moto Recycle have also um, helped me with the stickers on the bike and um, the biggest sponsor that's come on board is, is a transport company called Hublink. I'm so relieved to be here and um, it's now I'm just going to focus on improving the bike, improving me, improve some lap times and, uh, and just enjoy it. I just want to enjoy it. As I, as I said, the thing, that the trigger that made me ride again was watching my dad suffer with cancer slowly and, and a few other diseases and um, I just said to myself I'm gonna ride again while I can and, um, and here I am I've made it <laughs> I'm stoked